Hello, this is an introduction to EWT on orbitals and the distance and energies of electrons in the atom. Now if energy flows as waves, and if a proton contains both an attractive and a repulsive wave, then atomic orbitals can be calculated using classical physics, right, where the sum of forces on an electron is zero. And the reason why that's important is then we don't have to use two different rules and laws for, for mechanics, you know, one for the large and one for the small. We can just use only classical physics. We'll start first with hydrogen. The orbital of an electron around a proton, which is hydrogen, a single proton, uh, is known as the Bohr radius, but it's the most probable location of the electron. It can be bouncing around in many different places. But two questions here. First off, why does the electron not annihilate with the proton? Because it does with the positron. And then the second question, is why is the energy, the photon energy, always constant for hydrogen, for any atom, really, if the electron has a probable location? Now, from the forces paper, the electric force of an electron and a positron is as follows. This electric force equation, uh, same one from the forces, but just been reformatted now to group all the variables into the parentheses. You can see it decreases with the square of the distance. Also from the forces video, and the URLs below too to the paper, the proton is a pentaquark with an orbital force passing through two particles, two of the quarks. And again, there's the orbital force equation, also reformatted to put the variables in parentheses, and you can see it now decreases with a cube of distance for this force. Now the electron is always attracted to that positron. That explains the binding energy and the constant photon energy because it's always attracted. But the electron is only repelled on an axis of alignment and that explains its probability. And that axis of alignment is for a wave going through two quarks slash electrons, really which are bound by the strong force, and that explains why the fine structure constant is in the Bohr radius, as I'll show shortly. Now, to calculate that position, at least when on the axis of alignment, it's when the forces are equal. That's when you set the forces to be zero for, for wave amplitude, so the attractive force equals that repelling force. And you take those two equations from before, set them to equal, and you'll be able to solve for that r, such as follows, because 1 decreases at the cube of distance and 1 at the square. That's how you can solve for r. And now you can see the fine structure constant, which is in the Bohr radius, and that is the coupling constant for the strong force. It appears in the Bohr radius because it's really a repelling force of traveling waves coming from that quark alignment. So here's Bohr radius, which is 52.9 picometers, and the same method can be used for helium. So now here's helium, but a couple of changes here. First there's two protons, so now the Q value becomes for Q1 is 2 because of two protons for both the electric force equations, F1 and F3. All right, so what is F3? There is another electron that has been added, and its distance is across on the other side uh, from that electron being measured, so it's at a distance of 2R. Now when you, and, and because it's a repelling force, it's added to the right side of the equation, so you get F1 equals F2 plus F3, uh, the two repelling forces is equal to that F1 attractive force. And if you solve for this, you end up with an equation that looks like that, R equals um, uh, 30.2 picometers for helium. And this is all done with classical physics, and yes, you could do it for all the other electrons and, and uh, atom configurations as well. But it does become more complex, um, becomes more complex for many of reasons. You've got electrons not only at various different distances, but at different angles you know, relative to the direction of the electron being measured and the, the nucleus, so all of which has to be determined. And it does require solving simultaneous equations all at once, but it can be done. And it was done for more than 400 orbital distances, and you can see 20 uh, here as an example from hydrogen to, to calcium for neutral atoms. 
and more information is in the URL for the, the paper uh, below. All right, but why even bother calculating distances? Most people probably don't care. Uh, and the reason is for photon energies. Now, the transverse energy equation, which you can see there at the bottom right, was shown in the photons video. Uh, and it is actually helpful to know and understand photon energies. You know, everything from radio waves to light to x-rays, this is quite helpful. And distance is one of those two uh, variables. Well, actually, there's three variables, but two of, uh, are related to distance. And that third is constructive wave interference, simplified to a variable called amplitude factor. So that's the remaining variable that needs to be known to solve for photon energies. Okay, and what is the amplitude factor variable? It's really a measurement of constructive and destructive wave interference relative to uh, a single uh, proton and electron, because this is stable. And it's really changes based on that stability which is being measured. So one proton, one electron is uh, simply an amplitude factor of one, but ionized helium, which you see two protons in the middle, now is much more destructive on that single electron and is therefore two, but now neutral or stable helium has two electrons and you can see how that is back to one. It's stable. Now, the pattern is quite simple. It's the number of protons minus the number of electrons plus one for the 1s orbital. The reason why the 1s orbital is easier is because the electrons are all going to be at the same distance. But that really only works up to helium beyond that. Uh, from lithium and beyond you have um, or electrons at different orbital distances. And so the amplitude factor actually has a pattern. And that pattern follows the, the shape of orbitals. It's because it's where the other electrons reside. And it does require knowing the distance to uh, the electron that is being measured, which is Rx. But this is the equations for uh, the patterns for amplitude factor, at least up to the third orbital, which third shell. Now it's helpful for photon calculations, uh, as I mentioned for ionization energy, and this is just an illustration of a photon colliding with an electron, and it leaves the atom, which is ionization. And more than 200 ionization energies were calculated using the method described here. The information is in that paper in the URL below. And one of the graphs is here, which is neutral atoms from hydrogen to calcium, uh, at least for the 1s electron, and much more is available in that paper. All right, but one, another question is why quantum leaps? Because electrons have defined orbitals, and they move from uh, lower to higher orbitals, or vice versa. Uh, but it's quantized energy. Why? And the reason is going to be related to proton spin. So first, a couple of icons that make it easier to understand. This is proton spin up and spin down, um, but that's not the icons that are going to be used in, in this theory because the proton is a pentaquark. Um, it's going to be shown like this uh, for quark alignment to understand it in future videos where the icons have to get smaller. It's just going to be simply replaced by triangles. Uh, but the idea is that it's illustrating spin up and spin down protons. And another thing is uh, Q is now assigned, just a generic Q, is assigned to the count of spin, spin protons in, in alignment. So for example, two spin up protons in alignment or two spin down. You can see that dashed line uh, is, is a wave now going through uh, multiple different quarks of uh, the same spin of protons. And so expanding that out further now, you can see the uh, alignment of only one you know, proton, same spin proton, that electron is in the 1s orbital. And this was uh, calculated in, in orbitals. Uh, for the uh, square of the, the orbital force being the square of the number of protons in that alignment because it passes through multiple quarks, uh, two quarks. Now, in hydrogen, there's one proton. In helium, there are two protons, but they're of opposite spin. They're not aligned. That electron is still in 1s. And then, as will be shown, as you start to uh, increase the number of protons, eventually you have to get the same spin protons, such as lithium. And when they are now in alignment, as the wave is passing through multiple quarks, 
now uh, it affects the orbital force, which now has a stronger propelling force, pushing it out to the next orbital, in this case 2s. And that there's a pattern here, that number uh, q, which is the number of same spin uh, protons in alignment, because uh, each shell you know, is going to require um, a balance of ele electrons, which has to have um, uh, of opposite spin. If you take that number q of the uh, protons, the same spin protons in alignment, and you square that according to the orbital force equation times 2, you get the numbers 2, 8, 18, and 32. And what are those numbers? Those numbers are the total number of electrons in each shell. You have to add up the subshells, S, P, D, F, uh, but that's exactly what is in each shell to balance. And so to summarize this section on orbitals, the electron is attracted to the proton via electric force, but also repelled via an orbital force. And it may also be repelled by other electrons, but that's just the electric force. And when you calculate all of that, with classical equations, you can determine where the electron lies based on where the sum of the forces is zero. And the number of electrons per shell is really just the conservation of energy uh, following that pattern 2q squared I mentioned on the previous page. And the alignment or the spin of protons is the reason for the quantum leaps. There'll be more on this coming up in the video on atoms. And the distances uh, and also photon energies uh, were calculated and measured against known results uh, to validate this theory on orbitals.